for 13 days only, Square Enix and Ticketmaster presents Lightning Returns, the comeback tour. See Claire Farron playing her greatest hits, such as not knowing what the fuck is going on, killing people, being kind of a bitch, punching snow, and sighing exasperatedly. Be there. But what about talking to Chocolina? Is she gonna do that? I have to know. That wasn't in 13. Yeah, say, so not gonna lie, I'm I, I would go see this show. <laughs> yeah, I could I could watch Lightning sigh all day. Anyway, Fang bored us, so we've gone back to the, 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 the Chocobo friend. And this incredibly chill theme. Honestly, I've, I... Ugh. It's good. Yeah, this is like Uematsu, or Uematsu's lone, like, uh, addition to the soundtrack of this game, wasn't it? I don't even know if that was actually him. I just, I can't find, I can't find any credits for who actually arranged the Chocobo themes. Because on, I think it's like on BGM, like, database, like, it, it says it's Uematsu. Huh. I don't suppose there's any particularly authoritative sources for any of this, is there? Not really. I mean, like, even the- like, I have the soundtrack CD, and they- they say it's- they have Imetsu credited, so... Huh. I'll be damned, you're right. He's credited for all three of them. Spoilers, there are three of them. We, we have some delicious Gisol greens that we are going to shove in our bird's mouth here in a second. Oh uh, yes, I forgot. Literally farming. Yeah, you're, you're being kind of an asshole here, just having your bird eat all that poor girl's, like, uh, stock there. No, no, it's cool. We grew that. That's our stock. Oh, okay. We, we own this entire plot, basically. Okay, so these are just people that Lightning is literally just employing right now? Employing is probably not the right word. Yeah, it's much too generous word. It's, they're more they're more like contractors. I see that like some of them don't even have names; they just have numbers. Is Lightning like just has she reached that point of not giving a fuck about anything? Basically, they've they've decided to contribute the use of their the use of their farm on a per crop basis. That's why they're contractors and not employees. But when but when Lightning accounts for all of this to Bunavelza later, then they'll be employees. I'm making a really protracted reference to Uber here, guys. Please appreciate it. Anyway, yeah, Hope is telling us about the plot, but we're not going to do the plot. We're going to go explore the northern part of the uh, of the Wildlands now that we can actually use the flying ability. That's technically the plot. I'd love just the the blocking in that cutscene just by default, so it kind of looks like, uh, you know, Hope is stuffed inside the chocobo, and like his voice is just like coming out of its neck or something, and that's what Lightning's talking to. By the way, can we can we take a moment to appreciate the Lightning's Lightning's cooing at the chocobo and saying "qua qua" in what I'm sure is her best approximation of an affectionate voice. This is, this is probably on the um, Ali Hillis's casting reel along with Meow Meow Chocka Chow. I mean, to be fair, Ali Hillis legitimately really fucking loves playing Lightning, so... Oh god, yeah. Like, I said in the thread, she got a fucking tattoo right where Lightning got her Lassie brand, of the Lassie brand, so, you know. I can kind of understand how it might have been an entertaining role to play, even if it's an insufferable thing to actually have in a video game. Those are two very different experiences. Anyway, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure she she has a healthier opinion of Lightning than, off the top of my head, Leona Lewis. Just a thought. Maya Sakamoto was uh, Lightning in J the Japanese version. And yeah, I think she actually kind of hates Lightning from the sound of it. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so that's Jump. Jump is uh, pretty cool. It's, is it ever not? Yeah, it's, it's a nice little combo. Yeah, in a Final Fantasy game, are you kidding me? Yeah, 
for so like beat down beat down and jump is a pretty good um, damage roll. Like when you when you want when you just want to put big numbers on the screen, it's great. It sounds like a hip hop song. Beat down and jump. It's also super handy when you fight like the dragons because jump inherently means you like he, you inherently get a lot higher and you have to hit their head. So that is another thing we will be seeing probably in the next video. It's like it's like one of those things that like it's sufficiently convoluted that it seems kind of implausible that the game might have been deliberately balanced around stuff like that. And and yet it makes like such an astonishing amount of sense when you lay it all out. Basically this game is really weird about death. Yeah, it's like it's there. Almost entirely accidentally, but it is there. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of weapons and special things that like, hey, it turns this specific move that is only on like this tiny thing into this other really specific move. Huh, so it's good to say they salvaged something from 13-2. You are truly yeah. the that that sure was a comment that Hope made. Yeah, that's kind of obvious, isn't it? It's like, yes, Hope, I am traveling here. What's your point? Anyway, level two angel. Yep, uh, level two angel starts throwing around the tier one elemental spells. It's handy, I guess. It's better than nothing. Yeah, it's still not, like, the most massive contribution to a fight, but it does mean that he can now help you get enemies staggered, as well as, like, just maintaining the stagger that you already have. He also can cast... Yeah, he can also cast Protect and Shell on you, which is super fucking handy. Yeah, that's... that's just great. Like, Jesus Christ, that's a game-changer. Anyway, this uh, Ecto Pudding, he pretty much just stands there and casts Spira. Um, make sure you guard that, because that can easily knock a thousand HP off of you, no question. Yeah. We're, we're firmly out of the Final Fantasy XIII healing after every fight territory, so like actually taking big hits is actually really bad. So yeah, this is... Uh... This is the northern part. It's got a lot of these very staggered platforms. Like, there's an upper half and a lower half, and you really do not want to fall down to the lower half if you can avoid it. Yeah. It's a big maze on two levels, and the lower level kind of fucking sucks. Both for its maze-like qualities and for its other qualities. Yeah, do as you will. Um, okay. He seems nice. Maybe he's heard of our contracting scam before. So how long does it probably wants to unionize in this field? Hmm. Honestly, if a woman a with that kind of hair, wearing that kind of outfit, and wielding so, that kind of weapon came up to you and I'd just started wager. talking to you, would you have a dissimilar reaction to him? Fair. Hey, it's thirteen. See, th this is why I'm thinking that, like, Lightning is sort of employing these people just, like, like not on the up and up, because, like, she's just given them numbers instead of names. To be fair, it wasn't Lightning who gave them the numbers. Yeah, that was that was the vet, Dr. Gasol. Oh. Hey, there's that dog again. Hmm. Do we remember anybody who's missing a dog? Hmm. No, but I'm pretty sure the girl in a hat is, or the hat is a refugee from the world ends with you. It uh, looks about right. Yeah, actually, I can see that. Also, hello, Fang's voice actor without the Australian accent. Also known as Fang's voice actor. Stay with me for the first little while. Not that I know much about dogs. I usually treat people. I mean, this obviously. is this is where we just acknowledge no, the anecdote about Fang's Australian person. accent and all the weirdness that surrounded that. For the dog. It's <laughs> fake. I, would, except, except. I mean, I wasn't gonna say it, well, but we're out of ingredients to make. You gave me the opening. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. 
so yeah, fetch quests. Hey, we've already got all of these things. Man, that sure is a happy coincidence. Yes, a coincidence. I could collect the ingredients for you. Yes. I could you do could. it in approximately no seconds. Like you'd have to go to the ends of the world to find them, or anything like well, that. Well, well, no, because I have them in my hand right now. This girl, I mean, I mean, not the geographical ends of the world, just more on. like you know the apocalypse. Oh, no. I would love it if, like, Lightning just turned around, took five steps, then turned immediately back around and went, here you go. Okay, then. Tell me what you need. Because Troll Lightning is the best lightning. And I should give these to Tilda, right? Yes, Um, camera? Camera? We're bored with her now. She's off screen. Like, it doesn't even have to turn. Like, it clearly stopped there at the end. Yeah. They, they they really put absolutely no effort into the dynamically generated camera logic for cutscenes. Thank you so much. At all this right, point well, in the Final Fantasy XIII franchise, you would you honestly want to be putting effort into anything at all? Yeah, we'll just be gone in a couple days anyway. Gosh, will you look at that? This stuff works fast. Claudia will be so pleased. Claudia, who's that? Who's that? Why, Dr. Gazal's assistant... Oh, we have course. a real name! You met her earlier. Oh, wait. You know her as 13. Is that right? Ugh, that Dr. Gazal. I don't know why he can't be bothered to learn people's names. Claudia is a wonderful assistant. Well, quite good, anyway. All right, all right, let's, yeah, let's not say anything we can't take back now. And when she's not yeah. Sure about something, she's a wonderful... Uh, checks with the other a very, very good assistant. Well, Anyway, yes, she's she's definitely an assistant. Run into Claudia again. Let her know for me, Where'd she go anyway? She went back to the uh the vet camp. You can have it. Oh, that was fast. So yeah, we're just gonna immediately feed this to our chocobo. Yeah, we are. I mean, it's it's medicine, but it's he's not sick, but it's medicine. It just makes them better. It's just, it's a unilateral improvement. I mean, I'm sure, a, I'm sure a dog's medicine is totally fit for a chocobo. It's, it's animal medicine, the animals are all the same. You pan the camera around for a bit, you just hear like this thud off screen. Come again. Uh, these places are basically only notable for shops. Well, that, and they're also a teleport location, so, you know, that's a thing. Hey, it's an incredibly specific item in a very weird, assholey place. I'm certain this is not going to be of any use to anyone. A traveler. Well, this is a rare treat. This place is off the beaten track. Let me tell you something. This used to be the center of civilization. It might be hard to believe, but up until a few centuries ago, this land was home to the world. Oh, cool, we're in academia. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, so I guess that's a little more yeah, evidence right. towards the whole the, the Wildlands was once academia theory? Everything. Soon after, I set up camp here with my colleagues to research the dark power that swept over this land. I, I don't think the game ever explains how we've been out here. these people got here, given that this place, this whole place is supposed to be, like, inaccessible to basically everyone. There's not much to do like, or see here. I thought this was supposed to be the afterlife, though. Might be in. What? Although you can what, that, that, that's not fields. the theme Despite of the game? Looks, the soil is quite no, rich. the... Afterlife is really more impending than actually here. I mean, this is this is the this is the apocalypse in progress. This shows you how much I have like actually paid attention to the game or know about it because I honestly thought this was like some sort of like last season loss flash sideways bullshit and we gotta like solve everyone's personal crap before like I don't know heaven sinks down the drain or something. I, I, I don't fucking know. No, you're you're mostly right actually. Of course. I mean, you know, you, you, we are we are basically years. doing everyone's homework for them. Make a point. The origin of the chaos that erupted and spread but yeah, the the apocalypse is coming. 
It appears also, the what the, the fuck is that planet there? Everyone the souls. I, I have no idea. Out here That's the, the moon? We question mark? To investigate the Omega point, but because of the Why does it have rain, a ring around it? Areas we haven't been able to reach. Unfortunately, so like, so, so like, Pulse has has an ordinary moon, and also Cocoon. Well, no, Cocoon's gone. Cocoon fell. Well, yeah, but there's no doubt he can take you. Like. I, I don't see how that moon could really be new. So, here's a question. What the hell happened to the remains of the Bonavelza sphere at the end of 13-2? Did it just, like, hit the ground and, like, roll away, like, some comical, like, Indiana Jones, big giant rolling ball of doom thing? Oh, it's still, it's still up there. It's now the Ark. Oh. So, yeah, the, the, whole, the whole thing was that, that it, it, um, it, Hope managed to launch it into space right as the, right as the pillar was breaking. Yeah, so we, uh, we, we crashed in it now, and we're using that as our base of operations. Yeah. Every piece of Cocoon is now heaven. literally heaven. The more we learn, the closer we get to the real Like, truth. honestly, the whole the whole thing is a is a bit of a mess, I mean, and everyone was, everyone presumably that. finished this 500 year experiment, and they were like, "Well, that was fun. Let's go back to living on Pulse or Nova Chrysalia or whatever the fuck it's called now." Go to the ruins. Ah, Christ. Well, that explains why he's got all of Bartanalus's furniture kicking around there in that joke that I made in that video that you assholes didn't let me publish. Is activated. Hey, we've still at least we've still got capacity, orphan sofas up in the ark. Letting you know it's full. Come back when you're done. I'll be waiting here. How many pieces of debris? It varies by location and situation, but I'd estimate that four would probably do the trick. Anyway, here. this uh, this is a side quest, all right. There are five of these little data points hanging around in this area, and we have to hit four of them. Data points. Yeah, they're like these little broken machine things. You'll see. I wouldn't. I wouldn't really call that a data point, but you know. I, I get. I get what you're. I get what you're going for. Anyway, I made that on the first try. I have. You have no idea how surprised I was. I'm floored. So yeah, basically go go around this stupid fucking area and jump on top of things and find the hidden bullshit. Enthralling. Unfortunately, this is where we kind of have to go to the lower level. This is arguably one of the least asshole-ish things that you can find down here. Yeah... Yeah, the goblins are not exactly... super threatening, shall we say. It does have a... it is a little bit of, an, of a novelty to be part of a 2v3 fight. You so, you know, that's something. And the, uh, the goblins still do all the usual goblin things. Yeah, they're not... they're honestly not very interesting. They do become confused when staggered, though. So, that's cool. I mean, they don't really live long enough for it to be any kind of advantage that they're confused while staggered, but I guess I appreciate the sentiment. And yeah, no. This, this is part of my on ongoing appreciation of the staggering variety in this game. I don't mean that there is a staggering amount of variety, I mean that the staggering is various. You know what I mean. Shut up. Did you know there's a weird fellow who lives in the remains of that downed airship? Hmm. I can see a light over there. Sid from Final Fantasy VII. Please let it be Sid from Final Fantasy VII. That'd be cool. This game could use Sid from Final Fantasy VII. I think more games could use Sid from Final Fantasy VII. He'd tell us to sit down in a chair and drink our goddamn tea, and it would be slightly troubling when we thought through the implications, but we'd ultimately forgive it, because it's funny. Him and Hojo were the only two redeeming factors of Dirge of Cerberus. I, I would hesitate to classify anything in Dirge of Cerberus as being a redeeming factor. I mean, the, you, could, you could argue that they're mitigating factors, but for it to be a redeeming factor would suggest that the work as a whole is redeemed by their presence. Are you kidding me? Dirge of Cerberus as a comedy is fucking brilliant. It's laughable. 
Yeah, I don't know if I would go quite that far. That's because you both have no taste. But I mean, there's there's definitely laughter involved in its appreciation. Guys, 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 wait, 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 hang on. Hmm. Do you Is hear that? Downed airship? Originally, now it looks as though it's someone's home. Ah, I hear that. Oh lord, oh how I hear that. So, imagine for a second that you're a writer at Square Nix, right? And you get told, hey, we're gonna put Saws in this game. And they come to you, what should we do with him? Says. Well, the last two times, the ho his whole plot here? was like, oh my god, my son is missing or has been taken from me or is lost uh, in time and space. So, I'm gonna guess anything oh, other than that. Been like that for centuries. Silent as death. Ever since the Holy shit, I've got everything. it. Let's try to kill or kidnap Dodge again. Yeah, still alive, but it's all... We seem to be having a difference of opinion so, here. What's that? Fuck you, I'm, I'm right. Souls. If I can collect enough soul fragments, Dodge will wake up. At least that's what I was told. Oh, I'm Man, so, lie, so disappointed we didn't get that reaction I had when you guys right told me about this on camp or on video audio. I, um, uh, I look after yeah. Myself. We weren't we weren't rolling, but if I if I recall correctly, it was something like Hope you've got just to about that, yeah. About Dodge's condition. That that was my best attempt at an imitation. I know, Lightning. I think I our viewers might be able to infer from this how we feel about this turn of events. Exactly wrong with Dodge. Physically, he seems fine. So hey, that was just hanging around outside. Me. If it is yeah, so um, Daj's soul has literally been broken up into five pieces. And uh, we need to get them all and put them in the soul, the uh, coffer of souls so we can bring Daj back. So it's literally a fetch quest. God damn it. Say, but this is a special kind of fetch quest, because this is so important, it's actually a one of our main quests. Oh yes. This is the ultimate fetch quest. You may recall that there were two hotspots on the Wildlands in Hope's big map earlier. In fact, it's such a a crucial thing that it's literally given to us in a screen filling pop up box. Not even dreams. It's as if it's as if he's in a coma. It's just like they couldn't they couldn't even find a particularly creative way to have him fridged for a third time. It's like no, he's he's not he's not even missing or held hostage or in any kind of tension. It's he's he's asleep and he's lost his soul and you have to find it in these five places well in all honesty i'm really empathizing with dodge here because after seeing that i too have lost the will to physically exist <laughs> <laughs>